services, Asia office in the Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. She has also served as UNDP liaison officer for Habitat uh, for the second Habitat conference in Istanbul, Turkey, and also a program manager at UNOPS New York and assistant resident representative with UNDP Algeria. She holds a master's degree in international affairs with a concentration on development economics from Columbia University, New York. Mrs. Kozlet, you put it. Good evening, and thank you very much uh, for inviting me tonight to share uh, with you the special evening, uh, which is your first reunion um, of the New York University of Tirana. Uh, I want to start by um, telling you how privileged I am to work in Albania since two and a half years, um, and also the time in which Albania is in right now. Uh, when you're aspiring to join the European Union, you have just received an invitation to join NATO. Um, this is really a critical time for Albania. And when you always think about where Albania started 17 years ago, it's just incredible the transformation that your country has gone through. So for me to watch this transformation and to be part of it and support it from the United Nations is truly uh, a privilege. Um, I wanted to speak to you a little bit about Albania's um, support to UN reform. You must have all seen in the press about one UN delivering as one UN. And Albania volunteered uh, about a year ago to be a test case for UN reform on the ground. And it's the only country in Europe, in CIS, that's doing that, um, bringing together in Albania 12 UN agencies, funds, and programs to work under one uh, office, one program, one budgetary framework. And I must say that already countries in this region are asking Albania and our office for advice on how things are going. So Albania is also leading, even though it's a small country, in this uh, UN reform. Now, your role in this country is tremendously important. I think you have graduated and you know, come through a very important university. And when Albania is now at the crossroads, young people like you can really make a difference to take the country forward. You're, importantly, you're very important actors in shaping Albania's future and ensuring its competitiveness in global markets. With the knowledge and skills that you've gained, and no matter what your chosen field is, you can contribute significantly to take your country where you want to see it go. And as citizens and voters, you can also influence and put pressure on your various governments to perform better. Investing in education is really a critical factor for Albania, and the University of New York in Tirana is an excellent example of the right kind of investment in education. The skills that you've earned at the university not only match the skill set for the Albanian labor market, but also international labor markets. No doubt some of you in this um, gathering have found the job of your life, but others are probably still searching for it. Follow your passion, don't give up, and good things come with time and investment. I would also say a personal um, note. This is a world in which, uh, where we live, where you have to think outside the box. You have to be creative, you have to take risks. And this is something that has shaped my career and it's really exciting when you do, because today's world is very complex, and these kinds of decisions require people to think differently. Um, I wanted to share with you a personal experience on why I chose to come to Albania. Um, in 2004, I passed through the um, President uh, Coordinator Assessment, um, to be a UNDP representative and the UN resident coordinator in this country. 
and I had a chance to apply to three, four countries. And I studied Albania, I looked at the um, documents, and my family and I thought, this is a great location, the country is safe, it's secure. But it wasn't until a very senior World Bank colleague said to me, the country you choose must be on the move, it must be dynamic, it must have the young people that contribute, can contribute. Don't go to a country that's stagnant. I won't tell you the other list of countries, it wouldn't be politically correct. And he was instrumental in my decision because Albania was a country and is a country on the move. It's dynamic, it's got great entrepreneurial spirit in young people, especially like you. And it's moving in the right direction. And that's why it's such a wonderful opportunity to work in this country. And I know that you'll um, do your best to take your country even further and have the country join European Union and NATO. So I wish you all the best and thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Mrs. Kostner, for emphasizing the role of this country. The last few days we had uh, another privilege. We had the privilege of hosting once more for the third time students from the King's College New York, uh, headed by uh, the Deputy Dean of uh, Student Affairs, Mr. David Leedy, as well as uh, a distinguished uh, guest uh, whom we are honored uh, to have uh, tonight. Mr. Brett Schudler was three times a mayor of New Jersey City and he is currently, after, uh, after finishing his mandate, he is currently a professor of public policy at the King's College. When he was uh, at the age of 83, Brett Schudler became the first uh, Republican since the First World War to be elected the mayor of New Jersey City, a community of about uh, a quarter of a million people, 65 uh, percent of which uh, are migrants and only six of them are registered Republicans. In 1993 he was re-elected with 69 percent of uh, the votes, the largest margin of victory for a mayor in that city. And in 1997 he was again re-elected to become Jersey City's longest serving major mayor in 50 years. Brett Schudler's innovative policies called the National Model for Fiscal Reform by Time Magazine reversed trends of soaring property taxes as well as increasing crime rates. His policing policies reduced crime by 40%, his tax cuts saved residents their homes. His pro-growth economic policies slashed unemployment. Indeed, during his, stay, uh, his tenure, Jersey City enjoyed 10 times the job growth of New Jersey's five other largest city combined. And according to a Harvard University study, uh, it led the 100 largest cities in America, not only in job growth, but also in poverty reduction. The topic uh, that we explored uh, this year with uh, the King's College was precisely ideas that shape the world. We are therefore inviting Professor Brett Schundler Tell us a little bit uh, about uh, this particular experience and how alumni themselves can bring ideas that can change the world. Professor Schultz. I want to really speak tonight not on my own behalf, but on behalf of all of our students and all of our faculty who are visiting from the King's College. And what we really want to do is thank you. We want to congratulate you and we want to encourage you. We want to thank you for hosting us so graciously and having an exchange with us students that allowed us to learn so much about Albania and also about your own thinking as individuals, as well as allow us to share thoughts on these subjects we discussed ourselves. We'll walk home having learned far more from you than I think you've had an opportunity to learn from us and in that way, we've really been blessed by this opportunity. We just want to thank you for that. We want to congratulate you because we think this achievement of beginning this university, setting this mission for yourselves of having a true impact as leaders, future leaders of the society, it's an enormously 
ex important undertaking. And we think that you've gotten a wonderful start on this mission that you've set for yourselves. So we congratulate you for that, and we also congratulate those students who are graduating this year, many of whom we've had a chance to develop a wonderful relationship with. And I guess we also want to encourage you, because we know that this is the first gathering of you as a new alumni association in connection with the college. We know at the King's College that the relationships that are created at the college level not only make the experience wonderful, but they also create a tremendous opportunity to help each other all through life, whether we're talking about professionally or just encouraging each other as friends. And I believe that this association will help keep you together after you've left this college. It will help you with relationships that will ultimately be important in your careers, and it will help you in terms of maintaining friendships that you'll value for the rest of your lives. I speak as someone who has been involved in many enterprises that I had no expectation of going into when I finished school. I had no expectation of necessarily going into finance. I had no expectation of ending up a elected official. Both those things were totally beyond my imagination when I was in school. But I can say honestly that relationships with fellow students helped open doors and also helped ultimately at critical points me in, in terms of my decision making, I was talking with other students, trying to decide what was right or what was appropriate for my own decision making about my own life. It was fellow students who helped me often make those decisions and work through those questions. And I think you'll find the very same with your own fellow students who are graduating now with you. So I encourage you to stay active with this Alumni Association. Don't forget the years you've had here and the things you've learned here. Don't forget to stay connected as a group of friends who can help open doors for one another and can help build up this society. Distinguished guests, UNYT professors, UNYT staff, alumni and current students. I would like to congratulate the upcoming graduates for the 2008 and also the special guests coming from King, King's College. Uh, let me pre uh, present myself. Uh, I finished the uh, Bachelor of Science in Management and the uh, Bachelor of, of Arts in International Relations. And uh, currently I'm uh, following MBA studies uh, at UNYT. And uh, you have elected me for the 2006 uh, as the alumni president and also at the hope for 2007. We would like to keep this spirit alive, supported uh, from uh, UNYT. And I would like just briefly to say what the plans are. Uh, we would like to create a council of uh, alumni and take further our alumni association and uh, also have our elections. Well, we'll give a better example for our politicians. Every two years we choose a new one. And uh, the council will decide for the projects and how we will keep contacts straighter and open more doors as our dear guest said. And important is to keep our relation between us. And I would like to thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ermir. Now, I reserved for myself the final chunk, which uh, sometimes is a little bit uh, more embarrassing than the others, because simply, you know, people are eager, let's say, to uh, honor, you know, the banquet that is prepared. But I think it is important for us, you know, to... I'm not going to be dealing with uh, units background information, but I would like to, to share with you what is uh, 
the modified units, vision as well as mission. Our vision.